Hi everyone, welcome back. We're uh, continuing on with some of our landscape challenge. I had all different kinds of ones drawn up uh, today to show you and I thought, well, let's do something that's a little different. Let's go paint down into the Grand Canyon floating uh, picture from a float trip on the uh, Colorado. Now the photo and stuff that I'll be working from as inspiration today, I'm going to show you how I changed it. This is one that uh, I bought and it's beautiful. This is called Ten Mile Rock. It's uh, on the Colorado, um, and I, I purchased this from Adobe Stock Photos, and so I can use it for some inspiration. But uh, you know, I wanted to change everything out. I don't want this to be about the, you know, I, every artist is different, and I like to make a journey, what's called a visual journey through the painting. So I don't want this to be about uh, Ten Mile Rock. So I just want it to be about a float trip, really, down to Colorado. So what I did was, and I put it here underneath my glass, um, like I did with the last one, is I took Ten Mile Rock out with Photoshop, which is what I like to do, and uh, then I made it, increase the river back here a little bit more, so like the river's continuing on. I put another bit of a mountain back here, uh, you know, part of the canyon back here, and I may, you know, like knock off this corner here, and I may get rid of this and drop this hillside down a little bit more, yet I'm kind of thinking that I'm leaning that way. Sun is uh, upper left uh, here into the painting. Always find your light source, that's what I do. Uh, and analyze, you know, some of the colors you're going to do. Here's a value nine against the landscape. It is, a, a, it is that way. The sun is up and to the left because this is lighter and warmer than this side over here. So you can see the real warmth of the color and the real coolness of the color here. So this is getting actually a little bit of shadow uh, on it. Doesn't have the direct sun that this side does. I may and I probably will accentuate that a little bit more so I can get a nice warm and cool uh, in the painting and that will give me a nice warmer reflection here and a cooler reflection down over here as we paint some of the water you know we don't have a tremendous amount of time because we're you know we're doing mostly like if we're doing a plain air painting I want to keep these you know 90 minutes to two hours somewhere around there so I won't be putting in all the detail I do do a lot of rocks and I do uh, um, do a lot of uh, different types of uh, landscape paintings uh, one of them that you'll you'll see let's see let's go over this way here uh, this one that's right back here, I just finished for one of my online classes. This one took me about, I put all the water in there. I wanted to have the depth. This is the uh, lone um, Monterey Cypress that's out in Pen Pebble Beach. Now that one I rendered a little bit more precise because it is a painting of a tree and, you know, of a, of a place. Ten Mile Rock here, I'm going to change that around because I'm going to get rid of it. I'm just going to make it like you're floating down to Colorado. Um, so I do both, you know, I do all kinds of things. But uh, that one right there took me about, it is a 24 by 16 painting, and it took me about uh, a little less than five hours to paint it. Uh, there are some that I do bigger ones that I'll put a tremendous amount of work into. So all this little detail and stuff like that, well, we'll see how far we get into it. Mostly I want this to be about a visual journey right down through here. Um, and uh, and he, so that's one reason why I put this uh, this here. I you know I liked this photo a lot, but I thought that this canyon wall just kind of closed off completely your journey going through there. So by pushing this back, you can see the difference. By pushing this back here, I create like this. Okay, you're going to continue on of the journey, and it doesn't just stop. You know, you get sometimes wondering what's what's going on there. So. Uh, here onto um, the board. This is a regular 11 by 14 board that I have here. I just started to sketch on. Uh, I took it, the uh, the painting here, and you can see the corner of it up here. I took it right up to and printed it out onto my laser printer and uh, up to a, the 11 by 14 here. And then all I do is, uh, what I was doing here as I was just starting to sketch this right now is... I drop in marks like, uh, you know, I use my square like here and, you know, sometimes if I want to get a more accurate representation of it here, you know, and then, so then I know my shoreline is going to come right back down here along this point there like that. So I get that nice angled shoreline and there'll be some rocks and stuff up here. Um, 
you know, I'll, I'll want to uh, come up and take a look at. But this is a, is a great reference tool. So I, I marked my center journey, which is right there. And, um, you know, from this point, I can come up, you know, I can come up. I'm going to start out right about here. I don't, you know, I just use it to help me reference sometimes. And um, so I'm going to start that angled here now this is one thing that i was thinking about doing is eliminating down this side so on this side here it's quite it's quite a big angle and quite a big wedge i might want to give just a little more drop and maybe an extra little angle here to this side of the of, of that um part of the canyon wall there coming down and like i say get maybe get rid of that extra little one that's over there and so I will bring this out and drop this down at a, a little bit less of an angle here like this, by something like that. So it's not reaching up quite as high. That levels that V down just a bit. And, and you know, every artist is different. We're all different at, you know, how we want to, uh, you know, to draw our journeys and stuff. So I'm just going to set that one in like that and set this other one crossing right back into here. So that will get them a, maybe a little bit more of a height difference there. And this one could come up a couple times. This, yeah, so it's gonna set my canyon walls in there. And um, then the water will come in on this side back down over here. So then I'll just angle that. And I do like a little bit of a break and like a, like a rock's gonna come out there and then that's gonna come right back there like that. So that sets up and it's you can see right there with that all together that sets up that really nice um, um, line. The reflections into the water will be down about like this and since we've moved one back here, we'll have this pretty much closed off right there and then that'll give us an area for blue. So. There's a lot of different ways, you know, some people, I, you know, if you're not really good at sketching and stuff, you know, if you want to have a, a, um, a nice casual artistic career, sketching is something that you should do a little bit more. If you're emulating something like, well, I'm doing Lone Pine, Lone Cypress out there with that, uh, I'm very accurate with my sketch and even the rocks and the little rock wall and everything in there because it's a recognizable place. So I'm, I'm, I try to get very accurate. With this one, I have I wanted to relax it a little bit and uh, and uh, play with the uh, atmospherics of of the painting and see if we can just use our photo for inspiration. That's what I do most of the time. I use photos and stuff for inspiration. I don't like copying photos because that um, is something that, uh, um, you know, I just don't really like to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have my photo out here. Here's my glass, same colors that I had last time. This is my Hansa yellow, my Indian yellow, yellow oxide, the uh, naphtha red light, burnt umber, uh, Burnt Sienna, which I feel is going to be a, kind of a popular one today. Uh, the very cool Thalo Green Blue, Thalo Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Red Violet, Black and White. Uh, I'm going to be using a lot of fusions, bristles, maybe my scraper. This is actually a putty knife. It's the Warner, um, which is all covered up because I've, you know, I've used it so many times. But it's the Warner uh, two-inch knife. Um, that I, I like that one. I got a, you know, I, I get all kinds of stuff. I've, there was a whole set of these really uh, kind of cheapy ones that, and, you know, came, well, actually, there's a whole set. Here it is right here. There's a whole set, you know, and I got the whole set. Um, and uh, uh, through, uh, uh, bought it up on Amazon, and it was like 20 bucks, and you got 18 different palette knives. And since I use them for, for, uh, you know scraping and stuff like that and i thought well oh, what the heck and you know give it a try and uh, so i've used it a couple of times you know these kinds of, of flat knives and stuff like that i do like the springiness and and the scraper itself it's actually a putty knife i do like that one a little bit a little bit more all right let's go in here first and let's go right to our uh, blue um since we have a lot of uh uh the uh, burnt sienna which is more towards a real toned orange keeping your blue slightly 
here just slightly to the violet. So a little bit of uh, of uh, the ultramarine blue into it will keep it nice and pretty, give it a nice contrast because they're almost complements. And uh, then let's just uh, lighten this up here to We'll step and drop down, step and drop down. I want to go really light right down along that edge there, which is almost to the white that you see there, right in there, which is uh, going to be just about your value nice. You can basically see the sky there that we will uh, want to put in. And uh, so we'll come in. Now that, you know, it always it always gets me just, uh, you know, I put that on and and... You know, just how much darker that looks. I, I want it just a little bit darker than my white that I have on the board here already. And I want to make it atmospheric here, so I want to uh, kind of pull this around. And since I, you know, I haven't really decided yet if we're going to do clouds or anything in there, so I want to scrub it a little bit, and that will help me create the atmosphere that I want to do uh, into the painting here. So I want to scrub it, model it around, grab some of this stuff, keep it a little lighter there towards the end, maybe just even take this down over some of these back hills here, especially over that one. And if you worry about losing your sketch, some of that will come back as it starts to, to dry up, but that'll work pretty well in there. Let's just keep that nice and light right there. And then we'll go up a little bit more blue as we go up a little higher, I go right right into my rocks a bit, and that'll keep a nice uh, kind of a blue. But I like the atmosphere from working and scrubbing your brush in many different directions. This is my Fusion brush, three-quarter inch, and uh, just working that in there. Sometimes I hit it with a paper towel. I want to concentrate on using a little more paint. I want this painting to be nice and thick and rich in color so I want to use a lot of paint today as we as we work this let's get that nice light really get that light right against that edge and so a nice misty atmosphere lots of paint you know this is one of the things that um, you know, I, I read all different kinds of philosophies and stuff, and one of them that you know, I've told you about is the masters always said that younger painters just never use enough paint. So that's one of the things that I always like to do is just like get that paint on there. Let's get that, let's get enough paint going in there. Now, let's set up an undertone. So I have this right now. So let's just add a tiny bit of the, of the burnt sienna right here. Let's find that, that undertone there which is kind of purpley bluish purple it'll throw you sometimes just how really how purple and how toned and stuff something is but see that burnt sienna you think oh I got this burnt sienna but look how violet purple violet that is uh, in that uh, photo there and it is you know as we and so I'll take some blue and some of the violets and We'll mix this down. We'll keep it light. This is going up against the sky, so you can see here, um, you know, it, I'm pretty darn close to what it is, and we can model some of that other color in there. But I always like to uh, get that just a touch lighter. And let's just come in and just pull down, leave this kind of streaky through here like this. And so you've, we've kind of found that tone that I want to use in there. And, uh, you know, you can break that up. You can tap into a little more sienna, blue kind of color. Don't get it too dark. You want to keep everything here really light. We can pull up a bit and add some of that uh, atmospheric, you know, look to it here. Uh, but get break it up just a bit so you get some movement to that canyon wall there, to that side of it there. So we have just a bit of that that type of movement. Let's atmosphere that just a bit more over here on that side, right up against that edge there. And uh, that'll be kind of good. That's just a nice look. That gives us our first look at it. And of course we can paint it again, but look how light that is. That's, you're like value eight and nine. And uh, you know, we wanna, I really wanna preserve that down. This might be a bit dark down over here. So 
Let's get that up a, just a touch lighter. When you're working with acrylics, the acrylic artist always thinks that we always remember our, our acrylics are going to dry slightly uh, darker. So we know that. Let's go over and let's find this next one here again into the violets. But we'll bring out just a little less this time. And so you can see that color up against there. It's going to have a lot of blues in it, isn't it? You see that? You see those blues and colors in there. So we'll have to we'll have to model some of those in and add some of those here. Let's uh, just get that a little bit more atmospheric. So this is the uh, undertone blocking that I'm going to do. Of course, we'll do all of that nice, wonderful painting and stuff on it as well. But. Uh, we just want to get some of the color on here, and I want to add some broken, some broken lines. Keep your calligraphy kind of light and broken here, and uh, and stuff off this. And you know, the funniest thing is, uh, yesterday I was washing my some dishes and stuff, and grabbed in there, cut my finger with a knife. You know, I put a band-aid on it. And uh, so as I was finishing up that painting there and I was moving some of the water, man, I kept hitting with that band-aid. It just made it absolutely perfect. I was like, well, maybe I should use a band-aid in my technique of painting because it was, uh, when I touched it with my finger, it was just, it was just perfect. So, you know, took off in, in slides and gave it a little bit of a different feel so <laughs> it was kind of fun um i'm just going to uh you know the you have your choice you know if you're going to leave a, a real edge i'm gonna i'm gonna just gonna clean up that edge just a bit which helps bring that forward i don't want to clean it up too much because i like the the uh the broken edge especially in something that's distant but uh just clean it up a little bit there and um Let's take a little bit more white. Not quite that dirty stuff in my brush there. The, you know, I'm working with almost compliments. You know, when you're working with the burnt sienna and the blues, you're working with almost compliments. So you do have to kind of clean your brush out every every bit here to uh, to get those uh, keep those colors. If you want to keep those tones a little more pure, because they will tone out pretty quickly. Okay, so that sets that one in and sets that side in. Let's keep going, let's keep moving here. Let's go up and set a, a darker one, a little bit more, but we're gonna keep this kinda lighter, warmer yellow that's gonna be here. This will be the undertone. We'll model it with some of this other stuff, So, but it can. we'll be able to go a, a little bit uh, darker here. And let's just undertone this, leave it a little bit chunky and rocky here as we come up the sides move your brush in all kinds of different kind of angles here we'll pull down so this is and just leave it chunky like that leave that brush mark that brush movement there let's just go ahead and add maybe a touch of the the burnt umber and burnt sienna right up here and uh, put a few marks of that pulling down see I like that fusion brush because it's nice and soft and I can just use a very light pressure on the um, on the brush holding it like that tapping that around and you'll get a lot of that nice canyon kind of movement there right away just like you know what you're doing here let's come back to where that angle is let's tap some of that along just a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of the of the blue now we'll this keeps this nice and warm this is the light warm side of the where that canyon wall is hitting and uh, We'll, we'll change that up. We'll add some cool, some shadows, and some additional lights here as we get going into the painting. But you think about, you know, as you're applying even the undertone or original block of the painting that we're doing here, you, you think about your light source and placement of it. Now, this angled line here should be a little lighter because the sun is hitting it a little bit more of a receding plane than, than uh, what we have here on the... Uh, on the, the wall, the canyon wall itself on that side. So we'll lighten this up. You could, I'm just adding a little water. You can lighten this up. You can warm it up a little more yellow oxide. Get some of that streaked in there as well. Tapping along through here, break that up, pull it down. 
try to use shorter, you know, kind of strokes so we get a little bit of modeling here, a little bit of brokenness to that. And uh, let's do break some of that up. Let's grab some burnt sienna and a little bit of the of the uh, um, burnt umber, and we'll just knock some of this stuff in here real quick. We'll just knock in the, the idea of some of it real quick. Just you know, push your brush around, tap it, push it around. We'll we'll paint more uh, depending on how much time we have. We'll paint you know more uh, rocks that that are a little bit more suggested. Just just but for right now, just kind of bang that around there right now, and uh, we'll paint more uh, correct architecturally correct rocks a little bit later a little depending on the time we'll just drop a bit of that around a few little touches of it there's a lot where I like to take a smaller brush and get that dragginess to it I'll show you guys that but uh, that gives a nice interest to it and you can put the cut edges we'll work a lot more detail but that does put in our nice warm and uh, you know as you can see if you look at here and then you look at that photo, it is a, uh, a you know, a nice undertone. Now, I, you know, I'm kind of deciding that I'm going to um, probably lighten up the painting a little bit more than what you see in the photo. Um, you know, I just, I, I probably want to have that uh, just a touch lighter, touch warmer, and some, just to give a little bit more uh, interest in it. I got to push some of this to the side. So you guys can see where we are on the other side. Now the other side here is quite a bit cooler. And so when you look at that, it's it's greener, bluer. It is uh, cooler than what we have over here. So, um, so I put up that nice warm, which was these guys. Uh, I hit that red by mistake. So I'll rinse some of that out. I pick up that nice yellow and some of that burnt sienna here, that nice warm over here now what I'll want to do here is to emulate that particular color that's there is uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of just a touch of that cooler that cooler uh, phthalo green blue and you'll see I'll uh, start to come in here might even get a little of that ultramarine blue but as I cool this off as I hit some of these blues look at how it gets closer and closer and closer into some of those tones that you're gonna see right in there on, on this one we can even add a bit of that red that gets it real close but it's cooler it's a lot cooler than what you have here onto the other side here so you'll get this and, and you'll look at that and I'll look at that right away on my painting to see if I have a nice light and and dark warm and cool uh, of the of that side of the hill there that we want to angle that in so I'm going to have a warmer side and a cooler side and that looks pretty good this other side up here now I might I might streak that just a bit here tap that around this is another way when I do block painting of you know desert scenes and stuff that I'll use my paper towel to to break up some of it every once in a while here and uh, you just and that's what you want is you want this nice brokenness that that's going to add a bunch of different movement and that has a whole bunch of smaller rocks on it so let's cool and darken that just a bit more a little burnt umber and some of that um i think put a little bit of that red and some burnt umber and the thalo green blue here let's add just a touch of water into that and uh, we'll pull some of the verticals here, stick that up here. Break the edges just a bit here. So we'll get that nice pull, that vertical down so it's a little bit darker than what that other, you know, side is there. And I do like that. It's a bit different than the photo, so we'll have to adjust a few things. But uh, I do like that, that it narrows you down but it doesn't close you down completely and we'll have to uh, uh, bring the uh, canyons a little closer right over here with uh, just a bit more of this tone maybe crossing over running into that just a bit here it, I'm looking for what we call in paintings the visual journey 
and visual journey through my tones and I teach a lot of this in color theory and stuff is and you know how to use your colors to create you know what what uh, Munsell and all of the you know uh, masters of theory and stuff before us told us to create to get some of these journeys these visual journeys so I'm watching the tones let's uh let's just wash just a bit more of this into some of that light right back here. Let's just push in a little bit there, back into that back side back there, a little bit of that coming through there. And so we'll work on that. But now you see, you start to go back there. Let's um, come up now, as I'm gonna come in through here, you know, water, painting the, the river and the water. We're gonna do it several times here. Water is, it, when you're dealing to here with the Colorado and stuff and, and of uh, you know the Grand Canyon which I've been there so many times um, the uh, stillness of the water here is going to be accentuated by pulling down you know pulling pulling your colors down and it should always be a little bit darker than uh, what the actual mountain is or causing the reflection here so I'm just going to quickly suggest these right now just by pulling this down we'll refine all of this quite a bit um, later on but uh, I'm just going to quickly suggest this a lot of people paint their you know their water and I used to always paint my water really wet so I'd worry about keeping the acrylics wet and uh, I don't necessarily do that anymore it uh, I paint with a lot of different tonal techniques so it's a little different and uh, let's go over a little more burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt umber, a bit more of my green, slightly darker. And let's pull some of that down. It's going to come right back down in here. So we'll push this down. This is just a good blocking in, but I want to pull down and leave some of those vertical strokes here, which gives you the length. And, and pulling down also um, calms the water. It does what we call calms the water. I'm going to put a bit of that right in here and then I want this to dry up so I can work it several times here like that so I want that to dry up let's con let's lighten continue this some of this just a bit over through here and vary that tone a bit here and just come in and carrying the just blocking in the colors and concentrating also about getting rid of little light spots what we call the holidays of the of the painting here okay and uh, let's come back up to the sky and my sky color that I have up here I'm just gonna leave a, a touch of this uh, uh, burnt sienna in that color too from my dirty brush we'll take a nice medium blue tone here a little darker than the sky that's um that's the way we do it that's the way water is just a touch darker okay and uh let's just go ahead and block that in right now and all this will change this is just your block your first look at everything i don't try to paint anything perfect you know, as uh, when I'm starting something like this, I just want to get those colors in and start the uh, the feeling of the painting here. So we'll block that in. There'll be a, let's go down to a slightly smaller brush, like a little six, so I can work a bit of this blue, which I want to continue right back there and right back across here like that. That's gonna be, it's actually, you know, the water line, those of you who study water um, and, and painting water, it would actually be closest to the sky here. Because of our angle, this would actually be, be lighter if you're putting this around this side here. And so it'd be a little bit lighter. So that's gotta go even lighter yet nice light because of the angle that you are to the you know when you're looking straight down the water stays dark when you're looking back and the, the angle that you're viewing on is actually lower like it is here 
so I'm lower along in the horizon line there, the light reflects at a different angle and it gets lighter. And I started that when I uh, started studying um, a lot of uh, Louis Ashton Knight's landscapes that he did. And um, I used to go over and teach in Paris uh, every year. And when I was over there teaching in Paris and I go down through Normandy, Louis Ashton Knight was an expatriate American painter around the turn of the century and he painted all throughout the old Normandy and stuff and I go out at weekends I'd uh, go out to the same places that he painted out in Normandy in France and um, look at what he's looking at um, you know the the rivers and all that kind of stuff and trying to capture how he did it but I started learning a little bit more about how light reflects on water and setting up stuff by studying Lewis Ashton Knight I thought he was the greatest and he's one of the greatest I think of uh, the um, impressionistic type of uh, landscape painters and uh, so I always enjoyed going out every time I'd go over to the Paris and stuff and go out and see everything and uh, study where he studied and ever and stuff but uh, so now you can sit there and you can see okay you can start to see a, a, a bit of you know how we want this painting to go you see a bit I want a little bit more um, light and a little bit more vital but I hope I'll adjust that and I'll work that but uh, you know you start to get that I'm gonna start working let's uh, take a bit of water here and let's just clean this up a second here and you gotta move you gotta move gotta move you gotta you know we're we're this is all block painting don't you know one of the things that uh you know you <laughs> that i learned from studying all of lewis ashton knight and of course his father uh daniel ridgeway knight um the uh uh they go out and you know they just didn't go out you know most of us today most of us plain air painters and stuff we go out and we paint a thumbnail of some. Hey, that doesn't look too bad. You look at that with that. It's not too bad. Capturing a little bit of the feeling. Um, but we go out and um, we will paint a smaller thumbnail like this. This would be a large thumbnail. A lot of them would go eight by ten, you know, or so. A lot of painters, and um, and everybody's different, and that's great. You know, that's awesome. Um, but we go painting. He would go out and paint the. Uh, the full size painting right there, right out in nature. Uh, and sometimes his perspectives, he'd go stand right out in the middle of the river and he'd put his, instead of using an easel, he'd use a ladder and put it down into the water and he'd stand there and we have pictures of him in waders standing out in the, um, out in the river and uh, taking, uh, you know, painting with his painting propped on a ladder and stuff. So it's really kind of fun. Let's uh, scrub on a little bit more light, a little bit more blue, a little bit more ultramarine. I'm just going to use my small brush here, keeping this real light. Let's just scrub on just a bit more. Refine that light. I'm a real biggie on refining that light here first. Let's push that in because that changes every, all your other colors and stuff that we're, that we're using. And so let's get that. And it usually takes a couple of times. And... So I don't frustrate myself by trying to get something perfect my first time through. This is your, you know, we've done the first look. You know, if I want to change the sky, add a little more violet -y kind of blue, I'll, I'll reach over and grab some more ultramarine blue. But I want to keep that, this nice, uh, you know, perspective to the horizon, this lighten up of the atmospheric perspective to that horizon. And look at the, this is where we're going to get our ultimate depth, right here between this one and this one here. Um, and it's what happens over there in that photo there too. So if I move that over a little bit, you get a tremendous amount of perspective there by leaving that light in that one right there. So we want to make sure, maybe I can leave that right here as we start to paint that. Let's go work that area just a, a bit more since I have my number six here, Fusion, in my brush. I'm going to take a little Burnt Sienna and uh, some of my Burnt Umber here modeled onto the brush and... Uh, I'll push that through and you can see I want to concentrate and see how much depth I can get you know on that on that particular edge you can pull back slightly which will atmospheric the edge like that slightly and push the the contrast further back in um, you can do small strokes 
we can, there's a bunch of ways that we can come in and address this. If this is really, really coming forward, you know, the other way to address it is to reach up here. Let's grab some of our, a couple of our colors here and even model in some yellow. You can, I mean, these are, are great. If I don't have too much time, you come in there like that and lay down that, your, your, your um, uh, scraper. Now look at what it does when you look at that area to that area there by modeling it up and scraping it down. It does some nice things and so, um, and gives you some nice, some quick, nice looks to it. And so we could come down here and put in that second little ridge line, that little, little broken line of, of color that's right in there like that. Um, you could use that to mark, mark up areas, and drop some things down, and uh, toss on a, a bit more broken uh, rocks and colors and stuff up over here, uh, which we'll do more of, you know. But the scraper is really fantastic for a lot of things. Um, make sure you vary your colors. I'll add a little more. Uh, yellow oxide to this side because there's just a bit more yellow right up here and I'll pop that in and then there's some light tones in there too but see you get that nice modeling very quickly of that tone which is you know a nice thing to do so you can do those if you do you know if you're out and you don't have much time and you want to get something in real quick and just capture the tones which is really what we should be doing is just capturing the tones I don't always like to come in there and work you know, with a small brush and, and, and put details in because that's more for the studio. You know, that's more for when you get back and you're in the studio. But capturing the, the look and the tones is one of the first things that we can do. There's a lighter tone in there. Let's just go grab some white. Let's lighten that up. It's right in here. You'll see that lighter tone in there. Just a touch more, if I wanna hit it perfect. Remember, I gotta go just a touch lighter a bit more of the uh, burnt sienna and stuff. That's pretty darn good for hitting where we are right there. And I can take that and just drag that right across. See, that's why I like that little fusion. I can drag that right across and create that fractured edge that I see. And I hold it very flat and let the let the ferrule just drag right on the, uh, the ferrule just drag right there onto that uh, onto the surface so it's almost like scratching it just a bit and that'll help you get some of these different looks there's all kinds of ways though you know that's the fun thing about what we do as 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 artists and painters is you know get to see all and create different ways to create some of these effects and try to create them kind of quickly but uh, there's a light up there, and then there's a shadow pulling for it. You know, how much time do you have to put in that shadow? I don't know. But I might pull in just a bit of that broken line in there like that. And, uh, you know, I'll look. Let me get that light off of that. And I'll look through here. There's a, It's slightly darker coming in on this side. That's what I look for. I, I want to capture the tones correctly, so slightly darker, slightly cooler. A little more burnt sienna, tiny bit of blue, which will cool it. And you can see the difference between the two tones. And then come over here onto this side. Let's push back that light. Let's push this in, because it's out of the light a bit. And just drop in that, that impression of it right there, okay? Capture the impressions of it. Capture the impressions of it. Just right in between the two. Let's just pull down right in here a bit. Capture that vertical rise. Use your brush a little bit vertical. Not too many verticals. Don't get too verticals because too many. You I mean you want the, the verticals movements like this to cap to get you know to get that lifting of the of the painting. But you know you don't want to get too much because that that takes you vertically instead of back through your um, path, your your visual journey that we're setting. So I will always watch that to what my path is here. Let's grab some of that nice light, some yellow oxide, bird sienna. Look into for those tones that you have here. I'm a little yellow, a little bright. Um, you can instantly tone that with a little bit of blue, 
Always check that out in that nice ultramarine blue is a nice one to use because it's a lot weaker than the actual blue and that's a, that's a lot better, just a touch yellow. Um, but it's a lot weaker than the uh, thalo blue. So it's a good blue to use for intoning and stuff like that. So let's just see where I am here. Yeah, that's, that's right in there. Now I want it a little bit lighter though and maybe just a touch warmer. So I know where I'm at here. Let's just use this and there's all different kinds of ways. Lightly push this around like this, capturing some of that, you know, set up some of that nice movement here so that you set up that nice vertical, I mean that, that nice sliding movement here to this. There's a nice little ridge of rocks that I kind of like right there. So I'll kind of angle that just a bit like that. Break it up, tap it a bit, break some of that up. But leave, and this is where, you know, if I'm quickly doing something, capturing something, man, I'm going to leave some textures and stuff like that, especially if it's up here right along my visual path that I want to pull somebody in there I'm gonna I'm gonna leave a lot of that and let's put a few strokes of that right through here a little cooler I have just a touch more of that of uh, the uh, blue and stuff into that so let's go our burnt siennas and a little bit of our brown that's just a nice shadow color. If you want to cool that shadow anymore, you can add a touch of blue. Look at how much cooler that takes that color. So you can have a warmer shadow and slightly cooler shadow. As we go into uh, work, I don't, want to, I don't want to spend a lot of time in here, but if you start putting in the, the correct planes of, with your brush, the pulling down and the angling plane, you can start to uh, really quickly create some little looks of rocks and stuff through here okay grabbing some of that through I'm not gonna get all uh, wild and crazy about it but take some out with some light here so you'd have the light struck plane the shadow plane pulling down the light struck plane here some medium planes here just kind of, I'm just going to emulate them. I'm not going to copy them. That'll take too much time out here for like that. So I'm just going to emulate some of their, some of their movement. So you just pick out like, okay, there's a nice horizontal. Boom, boom. Go, you know, take a slightly lighter. It's a lighter little horizontal. You're just going to emulate it. So you're just going to come in there and say, okay, there's a lighter horizontal which is a light struck plane and then the vertical more of a shadow plane and you start to emulate where those rocks and stuff are going to be without spending a whole bunch of time right you want to go spend time then you can you know and you do what i you know what i do like when i did the uh wrong way when I do when I did this one here and I do the rocks you know I started out the rocks the same way that we're doing here and then I go back and I work them again and again uh, those rocks are worked about four or five times to put in broken color other colors other tones my first my first go through is my first impression of it you know of the paint so here I'm going to use some vertical strokes to kind of emulate where a few of those rocks might be here along the plane here. I don't want to get too too much into it, but you know, it's the vertical here, a little bit of burnt umber, tiny bit of blue, get you a nice cooler one. And uh, we'll grab a, there'll be a few cooler, darker ones here. And uh, push them around a bit. Um, but, you know, you can see, boy, if you just take a little bit of time, you'd be able to emulate, you know, this this side of this canyon pretty quick, just looking for where its darks and its lights are, you know. And, and you don't need to, like, copy everything, but you look for some structures that are pretty nice. Like, there's a nice vertical crevice right there that's going to come off of really this one that sits a little bit higher here. And if you just take the chisel of your brush and you just slide it a little bit, you'll start to emulate that vertical crevice here and uh, take a little bit more blue with this. 
move over and grab this other one. Sometimes I'll tap it a little bit to make it look like it's broken, you know, but you're painting pretty quick here and grabbing a few of those. And so you'll get a, a nice impression of what that uh, is. And, you know, then after you get the impression, then you can go back and refine it. Let's just stutter our brush like this with just a little corner of that fusion. It's just so nice. Stutter it and you'll get the broken feeling of all of those smaller little rocks and stuff that we have up here, which is uh, move over just a bit and just little stabs and, and stuff. You don't want to get too many edges because you want this to recede here. So we'll just kind of stab at that a bit. A couple of uh, light strikes here, down, will give you a feeling of more rock. There's a little bit of a slide here that I can get, capture here. A little bit of a slide there, and uh, yeah, and I'm not gonna. I don't want to get bogged down, and I'm starting to do it. I don't want to get bogged down in too many details. But this is what makes you know. I do enjoy doing this. I in uh, capturing and in you know catching some of the some more of the feeling of it and stuff. But uh, yeah, we. We don't want to get too bogged down. Let's take some light because that just takes time. And that's always you can go back and work some of that in the studio. That's let's get some light, more gray, so we add some some additional th um, ultramarine blue to this. You'll get more of that gray, a little warmer because it is a light struck plane. We're going to look at this little rock right over there. Boy, that hit that pretty good. So I'm going to be just a little lighter. And let's just come in over here to where we're going to have that little rock and stuff coming out here off to the side. Here, that. A few other little touches of them along the edge here. That could be a bit lighter. It's still just a touch darker. Use your brush a little different. Maybe grab it this way and get some modeling, which is broken so it's not just a solid stroke of color there that'll get you some some more and let's just model a couple of rocks there onto the edge now take that color darken it down just a bit just a bit and put that right into the water there at the same time here right underneath them and you pull down a bit but so it'll catch a bit of that reflection that could be just a touch lighter here. Just going to put a bit of that in for right now. That's where the water is going to go into the water here. We well, could have another little light one back here, break up that a bit more. There. Cool this down. Let's cool it down a little more blue. Maybe a touch of that green and the burnt sienna here. A little darker. And, uh, Let's add some of this over here onto the other side. So you'll get a different kind of gray, a little cooler gray. We'll just break up that edge a bit there with some of that, okay? And um, so you, it's so we're gonna have a nice warm and then we'll have a nice cool there, okay? We'll have that warm and that cool there. Let's uh, let that stand for just a bit. You can work. That's a beautiful thing that I like. Well, that's not looking too bad. So you can look at it that. So I, like I said before, I have a camera set there about eight feet away. And, you know, you should get up every once in a while, step back and take a look because that's the effect that you're painting there. So when you see me look at that monitor, I have another monitor there, a monitor there, and a monitor over here. But so when you see me looking at this monitor here, I'm looking at it at eight feet. And that's, I like to paint my paintings so that they're visually interesting at six to eight feet. That's like in our gallery and stuff here. That's what most people will look at the paintings at about that distance. Um, and so I like to I like to get that visual about there, but uh, you know it uh, is something that you should get up and step back and take a look at you know when you're you know a little further back. Let's um 
let's go in and let's just let's just uh, that smooth that water. That's the thing that's getting me. I like this edge here. That water's just a, a little bit uh, needs a little bit of refinement there. And the, I do have extender. Now, extender makes everything, and if you want to add it, it keeps everything wet. I'm not a real big fan of that too much because I like things to dry so that they don't blend. But you could put it on. Now, I'm going to put it on this way. Since I have so many streaks already showing up through there, I'm going to drop a little bit of burnt sienna and some yellow, some warmer color, right across like this and soften that out a bit work that out this way just a bit and I'll work this water just a bit so you can see that softens that out and um, but it has a lot of streaky pull downs here well you know you guys couldn't see that completely huh sorry about that um, but uh, so I'll put a bit of this on now when I put this on this is going to give me 30 minutes depends on how the warmth is and stuff you know that you have um, your working time uh, I don't need that long because I don't play into the water. I used to, not anymore. I'm going to darken this down just a bit here. Let's keep that canyon wall a little bit more. Let's push that through. Now there's going to be reflections of greens, which we have to add. So a little bit of our phthalo green blue, some yellow oxide green here. Let's get some blue into that. Tone it all down with some of that Sienna's. Those are all beautiful little green colors that we'll have. And we'll put a few over here as well. And uh, all you have to do, and I paint a lot of water and a lot of landscapes. You can go over and see all the stuff I did with, with uh, you know, I, I love the water and stuff I did in my... Uh, the beaver float plane up in Alaska when I painted that one. Um, the, uh, you know, I like the, the interest to it. And you just, when you're painting water and you're painting reflections, just like uh, Lewis Ashton Knight did and everything, you don't have to be totally correct. You just have to uh, get close. So I'm going to put in a, and it's more, it's actually more believable if you don't do it perfect. So you pull down to create uh, the uh, the nice reflection itself and then sometimes hit it with a couple of vertical strokes to uh, you know to soften it out let's um, work a darker tone in through there some burnt sienna some blue that's that darker rich tone of ultramarine blue and that that will pick up through here there'll be a nice darker rich tone right through here and it may take a, a couple times to hit that, but that could be even a little darker here, a little richer right in there. That's pretty. And so it's, uh, you know, I'm looking at the tone. I'm a tone painter. I look at the tone and how that tone is going to reflect in there. That's really nice. I'm going to have a streak or two of that. You'll see that. See that streak or two of that right in there. So I'm just going to lay up a, a, a couple of verticals here. And if I want to soften the vertical, I just lightly go sideways just a bit. But get that, you know, get the tone in there so you don't have to blend. That's the, that's the biggie. Get the tone in here through this so you don't have to do any blending and stuff. But usually when I paint the water like this, I'm looking at it, you know, a few times. I don't try to get it once. I definitely don't try to get it twice. I try to get it just a few times, getting some of the uh, the tones in there. And uh, that's looking pretty good. Let's get a uh, bit more of our rich color, which will be the, the one of the richest colors is a real gray from our um, our uh, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and a little bit of that violet. Nice, cool, rich color. And you'll see that right in here. Do you see that right in there? That's that real rich color right in there. Dark. We're talking value two or so. Let's work some of that right in through here. 
and see if I lift the pressure on my brush, I start to do what we call, I lift the pressure and I start to get a granulated stroke out. And that's that real believable water, watery stroke. I'm gonna pull just a bit of that for that canyon wall right here. And you can blur that out slightly, but we're gonna take a little bit more of a, a little bit more blues and stuff over the tops of that. Let's pull up a bit of that dark through there like that. Blur that in. Pull that. That's nice. Pull down. Let's pull down just a bit more. So I'm watching my strokes. Am I lifting? Am I pulling up and down here to get some of that nice effect? The tones, and you know, you see the tones in through there. So this uh, this tone has to come through. So you can see I'm not doing a lot of blending. I'm streaking the tone. I'm gonna go, I want this to be very broken here, so I'm gonna keep a light pressure on my brush. Let that fusion just do the job. See how it breaks the tone? Okay, so just light pressure. Let that just streak right across like that. Very light pressure, and then I don't destroy all the tone that's in there, and you start to get that look of that tone that's right in there. So the fusion brushes are designed so that you use them really soft. You can use them soft, or you can push stuff around. And I like to use them really soft in a lot of things. Um, let's go to a let's go to a smaller brush here for a minute. Find an old. I like my old ones. My old ones work really really well for me. Let's make this slightly different. I always like to change that tone a bit. Don't like to paint too long with the same color because then everything becomes the same. So I'm always changing. Always like that change. Here. Let's pull across here just a bit. We'll work the light back and forth across here for a minute. Okay. And okay, that's that's going good. I want to put a slightly warmer, lighter tone. I'm looking for that one right there, a bit of yellow in it. Let's pull that down right in through here. Pull that right down in there. Streak that across a bit. So you can see I can get that streak again, just pulling back down across it again here. and. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that go in there with a soft mop or pull in there. I, I'm one that if you're having to mop something, you're using the wrong tone. Go adjust your tone. I'm going to pull this because I know it's going to darken down a bit. So I'm just going to pull a bit of that. I like that nice light, which I still got to come in there off that one hillside there and, and uh, build it up a bit more. But uh, I like that light. There's some other nice lights not quite as warm so we'll dock it down just a bit pull down just a touch here get a bit of that streak see it's a tone here right in there that's kind of nice now my original blue is a little bit more green uh so if you look at this i wonder if i step um step that camera back just a bit you can get a little bit more of both of them in so my original tone here, when you see that, it's a little bit more green. Here it's a little bit more violet. I do like a, a bit more of the violet tone in that. So a bit more of my blue, touch of that, so of the ultramarine blue. If you want it to lean green, you're in thalo. And uh, so that's too violet. So let's add a little thalo to it here. And let's lighten that up just a bit here. It's always nice to have this one here. I'm going to be too violet, but I'm going to be pretty close, but I'm going to be just a touch too violet there. And that might not be too bad, though, if I, I'm going to add a little water. If i going over my greenish kind of tone here already, here, it might not be too bad. That's pretty close. A little more uh, ultramarine blue, a little less of the, and touch lighter more ultramarine. Let's just streak that across. I like to lift right off the edge like that. See how you create that fractured edge? So I'll streak. I'm going to leave some of this other blue in there. I kind of like that. 
when I come up to do that edge, there's a couple ways. One's press down your brush and pull back, or two is come up like this and then and then fracture off fracture off the edge. Need a little more paint for that to fracture off the edge like that. Just lift off, pull off at that angle, and you'll get that fractury kind of edge that you see over there. And so to create this 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 uh, broken edge there that's like that, what you do is you hold the, the brush here and you just pull back and forth very flat on the brush and that breaks, let's break up that line that's right there and see that'll give you your fracturing to your water right there. You know it was explained to me a lot, you know, I used to study a lot of the masters and it was like you know they they always say, you know, sergeant and stuff always says, use your brush like a pencil and everything. And I started looking at all this stuff. It's like, yeah, you know, we got all these tools and instruments to do all these things. And, uh, you know, how would you do this if this was a sketch? You'd have a pencil. You don't have, you know, 16 million different types of shapes of lead to do all this stuff. You learn it with pressure and with you know how you're approaching something the angle of your pencil for detail work or for general shading um you know and so i got thinking well yeah that that does make kind of sense you know may to make the thinner lines here we'll hold more of the chisel of the brush here and roll it to to put on a little bit more paint let's come back up in here sometimes to do more detail i'll hold the brush back but still, if you hold the brush way back, you keep the tip of it softer so you can fracture the paint a little bit. Let's put that light, and I'm going to need to lighten up this back edge back here again because I want that uh, I want that river back there a little more atmospheric, a little bit lighter. Let's push that in a little bit lighter. And Louis Ashton Knight was so good at doing that. And always zigging that in. It just sets that nice little bit of light back there. And I started doing that several years ago and really like it. Let's just use the angle, the edge, and just fracture. A little bit of paint would help, Dave. Just use the chisel of our brush here and fracture some of that. Here, a little bit wider there just put on some nice marks now some people go in and, and attack it with uh, you know a small brush and and liner brush and do all that kind of stuff and you know I I think that that's awesome I would that I used to do that I used to be into realism and used to do more of that and it just after a while just drove me kind of crazy I, was, I like to I love to paint and, but I like to, uh, I like the, I like the look of it being as a brush marker or a stroke or something. Now, here I got a, you know, a little bit wider one here. If you want, I just want to show you this. I'm not bothered by it, but I will show you this. I'll just take a model color. If I want to take that out, you're in a vertical area, so just come back in and touch into the vertical, and you can take out. If you have to adjust anything here, just do it in a small vertical like that and you can take it back out if you want to soften some edge here don't pull it in a horizontal because you're in a vertical you're in a vertical area here so you can push up and down with the vertical and take some of that out doesn't even have to be exactly the same color you're just increasing that nice vertical uh, there and that's um is a is a great way to do it and that's a an Ashton Knight thing and I'll just grab a few light ones here, just a few, and just whisper them on, just a bit of that. I'm gonna put a touch more light. Let's get a bit more blue and a touch more light right across that. I said at the very beginning, I wanna make this a little bit lighter, a little bit more. So let's just build that again here. 
pull it across and see if I, I start out and then I lift the pressure off, it gets that granulated fracturing edge. I control that just like you would do with a pencil or something like that. You can smear it and soften it out with your finger here or your Band-Aid, whatever you want, whatever you want to do in there. You know, either, either one in there works. So let's get a little bit more light right across here. I'll use it and see if I hold the brush like this, I know I apply more paint down. So I'm applying a little bit more and here, push that in and out there just a bit. If I want to take some uh, dark, more of a blue violet kind of stuff, you'll see a little bit of the more of the fracturing edge there. If I want to go back and take just a bit of paint in there like that and just kind of go back and forth like this and let some of that fracture just a bit and I'll go back take just a bit of that dark out sometimes I, I do this fracturing also with like my bristle and stuff but I really I really enjoy the fusion I know this fusion like I do my pencil and uh, so I, I know how to control that but if, if you really want to fracture that up even more here you just go back and forth here we'll take a bit of that burnt sienna in there and this really is this is wet right now it won't fracture as nice if it's wet than when it's dry it fractures the best get more granulation to it when it is dry but I'll just show you here and I'll, I'm going to even more of a strike so I push my brush down a little heavier color right there so I push my brush down so I put in a little heavier color but see I lift the pressure and you get that granulation there which uh, looks pretty good. Let's, uh, okay, Dave, you've done enough of that. Let's keep going here because we're going to run out of time. So I'll, I'll take some of the uh, lights just a bit. Let's just tap a bit of that along there. Okay. Let's lighten up our light strikes over here, warm them up just a bit, lighten them up a bit more right over here since we put some of that other stuff on. As you work through, don't, don't ever think you can't go back. As a matter of fact, you should always go back and revisit a few things because, you know, as you put one color on, it's going to affect everything else around it. You know, so get used to going back and putting in and adding taps here for some shadows, some shadow planes here to some little rocks. If you're pulling light, then you're pulling shadow. So you're pulling different angles and stuff here. Let's uh, go over just a bit more, just a touch. So, and of course along the water line, there's some that would push a little bit more of a shadow along the water line in a few areas, you know, that you would have. And uh, you can, uh, you know, bring your colors, or, or just like what I have right through there, I'll just take a little water and pull up and down just a bit of water, just pull right up and down, right into where I was, and I'll pull that shadow, that water line, right down into the water there as well. And, you know, if you're putting highs and lows on your rocks, you should put highs and lows on your uh, reflections there as well. I'm not going to get too involved into this, but here. I want to keep going. I'm gonna... So you see that just a bit into there. Okay, let's... Um, add some softer darks, a little bit atmospheric. I have this nice blue, I'm gonna add it to some of my darks over here that I had. Let's just run through here. A little bit of that, I like that kind of almost bluish kind of color. I'm gonna take a bit of that right down in here, model it just a bit here that and I need to have that stronger horizontal here I was trying not to do it but it really kind of needs it here and uh, we'll pull some down here like that okay 
you know, really kind of needed that. Let's put a softer light through there that will a little bit more. So it's a little bit of the sky color, slightly light uh, here. And what that'll do is it'll make that a, this a bit more atmospheric through here. It'll give me the, the, the modeling and stuff, but see, it makes it just a bit more atmospheric and shoves that further back, just a little bit further back. Let's get up into some of my other colors and get some blues softer. The blues make it lighter, more atmospheric, and, and grayer. So, and that makes all nice colors for what we want to do here. Pull down slightly, step out, make it a little bit more of a angle there since that's nice. Here, let's just break up some of that. Break up some of this. There's a nice little and I like it. Nice little horizontal on that top up there, kind of light. I think maybe I'll try to preserve that right up there, because it's a nice look to the mountain, to that or to that canyon wall there. And uh, let's go grab a few darker tones here. Just lift off, just up a bit. Get rid of a couple of those holidays. There, like that. Keeping them softer. And you can always, um, always go back with a bit of your uh, atmosphere, your blues and stuff to soften, render some of that a little softer. Here, break that just a bit. I like the brokenness of the canyon walls and stuff there. Let's lighten that just a touch. Warm it just a bit of burnt sienna here. Pull down just a bit, up and down sometimes, down. That'll create the, you know, it's not just, a, you know, it's not just a uh, flat brush thing of, of paint. You know, one of the things I like is right in here, the paint is kind of dry and stiff. Do you see that's not real wet and runny? which means I have ultimate control over it in the painting here. See, I can lighten my pressure and fracture the edges like this, and that's what gives you all of this really nice kind of, let me zoom in just a bit here. That's what gives you all of this nice kind of modeling there with the, or you can use your, your Band-Aid, but that's what gives you this nice modeling there of, that, uh, of those colors here because my colors are kind of stiff here and so I control by holding the brush more flat th this nice fusion more flat I control how it's laying off of that brush here just like that so I get that nice different kind of you know kind of look there to that canyon now there's a little more dark up over here but I kind of like that it could have a little more blue into it um, I can make it all just more atmospheric now just by taking a bit of my blue, thinning it out here. And uh, let's just make a bit of it more atmospheric just by lightly running a little blue, a little light blue over it and making that part of that part of the canyon there, this edge here. Now that'll dry down See, but it starts to pick up some of those other colors. So it's all about, you know, everything that I do, a lot of people always just say, um, to, you know, because I, I was an oil painter for so long and I loved them. I, you know, there you go. Now you can see what the, that starts to look like. And I loved them. I loved everything about them. And, um, you know, it, and, uh, you know that but I paint so much faster and so much easier now because I don't blend I paint in tones and you're watching me make these tones and you know that's that's how I do it and it it works wonderful so those of you that can't because you know paint in oils and uh, anymore because of health issues or whatever boy the acrylics can really do it really nice because we can uh, 
you know, we can do the same types of things. We just do it differently. We don't try to make our acrylics, don't try to make your acrylics act like oils. Paint in tones, paint in tones. So what I'm doing here now is a little burnt sienna, a little bit of blue to keep that cooler, that grayer. I want to come over here and I want to cool and gray this side of this hill here. Push back just a bit of the those edges. Let's leave a little fracturing to that edge there. There's a little holiday right there. We'll push some of that in. So this side over here, I'm going to have a bit of light to it. A bit of yellow, a bit of, of light, but it's not going to be as light as this other side over here. So I want to come in. There's a, a bit of it, so I'll use it flat like this and just push. See the granulation? I'm using my paint kind of stiff. It's not real runny, so I get this nice granulation to it, and that's what makes all the little surfaces of rocks and the the feeling of it. Let's... um pull down like this is two little breaks here so we'll just break that edge not that I want to do a lot over here sometimes I'll pull some horizontals there and, uh, let's put another little tone in there in there like that that's a little smooth for me here so I'm just gonna break that up a bit here but uh, yeah, that'll work. Let's uh, drop this edge a bit more down. Now I, <clears throat> I've got to uh, probably darken, cool and darken here. A little more blue, burnt umber, touch of that, so I can make this advance in front of that more atmospheric backside there. Let's just drop a bit of that in there so I get some of that cooler stuff there okay and uh, just gonna add a couple touches of that over to this side now let's go over let's model burnt umber blue burnt sienna here it's just some darker colors we'll just kind of model that in here Just using the corner and rolling and pushing your brush to get some nice movements in there. There, like that. So we'll push some of that in. And um, then we'll grab some of that and then with some more burnt sienna, touch the yellow, model it up here, lighten it up here. And put a bit of this in and just kind of scratch this through leave some of that original undertone there there going through and to really get that to show forward we really should put a bit more of a scratch of dark right along that edge there break that up that show forward a bit more and uh, yeah this uh, Get a bit of yellows in there, some greens and yellows, some lights. Kind of, I'm not going to get wild and crazy with doing all the rocks, but you could. You can see how you can. We're just kind of capturing what we're trying to do is just kind of capture that area, some of that that look of that area there. We'll step back just a bit more. Go over. Okay, just some of that area, that look. And of course, there's green bushes and stuff. We got to put those in stuff here. But uh, yeah, let's push just a bit of those colors into this canyon. Just a few of those. A bit of that interest. Darken this down. Keep moving, keep moving, keep your decorations going. Let's uh, pull up and down here a bit. Nice shadow side of that. And yeah, I like everything I have here, but I, sh I sure could get a little bit lighter. Sure could get a bit lighter. 
let's just add a few more little movements here. We forgot to uh, touch along burnt umber and blue, touch the shadows and little marks here onto our rocks onto the sides here as well on this side. So we could probably touch a few of those and probably go to a smaller brush. I'm painting all this with, this is like my six or eight. Probably go down to a smaller one. Let's get a little more gray. But I, you know, I'm a big advocate of Sargent who always said, use as large a brush as possible for any given area and that keeps that it keeps away from what we call repetitive strokes and that's what we try to avoid as landscape painters you don't want to have repetitive strokes touches and stuff so working with a big brush really kind of cuts out your repetitive strokes and um, you know if I was back in well I am in the studio but if I was you know out working and you're going to refine this into a studio painting you know you would definitely put more of your values and uh, and broken colors onto these rocks and stuff like that but uh you know we're not there today and i'm a little bit same same right here i saw that's not really that great so i'd probably break that up a bit with a few more little rocks touches so it's not all the same then we'd have since we put green in the water we'd have to put these greens these greens up here yellow and you know another really great green is your Hansa yellow and black and adding that just makes wonderful greens nice rich you know pine type green colors and you can see in the the photo there the light is really coming from the uh, coming from the left side so you can see it quite clearly there so I'm going to put a medium tone down let's warm this just a bit step over to the side here warm it just a bit and let's put a bit of that over here a few touches of that over here on this side there okay maybe just a touch of that over to the light side the left side here of this area here of these guys do them quick do them quick and um then we'll grab some of our blues, burnt umbers, drop it right down over here. Maybe, and if you grab a lot of blue, sometimes it's great to grab that red, which grays that down. Look at the nice, deep, rich, dark that you create. That's a nice, because of the red, it's a little warmer. So that's a nice little shadow side, nice little shadow for this side over here. A little touch here and there. Just little touches of them through there on that side and we'll cool it just a touch of red violet into that deeper little blue here and uh, let's push some of that here onto this side which would be right side of these guys right along the edge of the water you can touch a few little touches of those colors into the water there as well it's kind of nice and it's really kind of nice Dave if you kind of line your reflections up a bit but there we go that's a little better so you, you know the viewer will pick that up as a reflection of that you know so it's a good way put that one in there we go just drop a few of those in here and uh, that's nice and Let's go over and let's lighten, warm it and lighten. This is kind of dried up. See, I don't like to work with it when it's too wet because the color will slide and not granulate and stay. So now it's uh, dried up a bit so I can come back and push my next bit of light in here. Leave some of those other undertones there push that around if you want to get smaller pebbly look to it and stuff then uh, you can go to a smaller brush just watch out for repetitive strokes of doing the same thing too much you know so we'll add just a bit of this through this area here 
that's not too bad. Um, and I probably just for the nice um, look, let me green this up a bit. Um, add a few slides, uh, longer pulling strokes of slides. I like that because that gives nice motion to it. So even if I don't see it in a photo, I usually add a few of them because I like the slides. And But if I'm emulating something perfectly, like, you know, 10 Mile Rock or something like that where this original photo came from, you know, maybe not, but, you know, because you're, you're trying to uh, paint what it is that you see there, so. But, uh, just a few of those, and a few of those other little darker marks through there, like that. Now, so I have that, and I kind of like that, or maybe a, a pull, let's do a horizontal, because there is kind of a horizontal feel or angled feel there to that one, so a little bit of some angle to feels to that. See, that kind of breaks up you know, those those angles. I want to keep that side soft. I want to build this other side a bit more. So, and I really, and this is where I want the viewer to go, right in here. So this is really where I want to build up, where I want to do that today. And so I'm going to lighten up, warm up, yellow, burnt sienna, white, some of these grays, blues, different colors, tones here. And, uh, I'm going to put in more of a lighter, and I'm going to go lighter yet, slide here. Because this is where I want the viewer, I want the viewer to track right along into this area. Pulled into the, into the painting a bit, right into there. So there's ones. Let's lighten and warm. Step off to the side so you can see it. Lighten and warm. There's my original. Here I am now. Let's take this. That's a little wet it was a little wet in my brush I don't want it wet because I want to I want this to kind of drag a bit so it's it's that's wet there so I have to use even lighter pressure it's wet it's best if it dries slightly but because I want this fracturing see that fracturing that I get right there pushing that I want that kind of fracturing that I get right there and uh, let's Pull this back like this and just set that in and fracture that up there just a bit. Let's fracture right here from that rock up. Get a bit of that highlights fracturing there. That's good. Gives you a nice look. Let's uh, smaller. I just used the chisel and did, just don't press very hard there. There we go. And um, let's add a little bit of that light, just whisper a bit here through some of this. Yeah, that's good. I could go just a touch more in a few spots. Stay away from my little bush there. Add a few little marks here to the that other side there. And yeah, that's good. And I'm gonna lighten blue, lighten that edge here. Boy, you just don't breathe. Because it's dinky dinky. Grab that nice horizontal light there. It's bent just a bit. And uh, it's a, a real good optical thing is to go ahead and put this dark back on in front of that, the dark of that. So you get a nice, like, clearer line right there. And you see you'll push that water back a little further. Now that water is ever so slightly crooked right there, so it really shouldn't be so... I'm going to take a little bit of this back hill, a little darker. This is where I want the viewer to go. So this is where, you know, and this is where I want the depth in that painting. So I do want to 
you know, push that back in there just a bit more. Now, that could be set in there. And another really good thing is, I mean, if you like to, you know, the paint with your knives, your palette knives and stuff, is to take some of that light with your knife into those areas. It's always great into those areas there. And and put that fracturing in of that little bit of that light there. See, I just get a little bit of that of that pink fracturing with that acrylic, especially if it's dry and I'm using it really dry. And sometimes you have to kind of push it and force it on in there, but uh, you get that fracturing and see that little bit of fracturing just adds that and you can scratch it. Just adds that extra little bit way back there that just pulls the viewer down in there. Now I can do that also a little different. So, you know, going back and forth between your knife and the fusion and stuff is, is great ways. I paint fastest with the fusion, faster with the fusion than I do with a knife, but a knife does nice things and gets you some of that nice look. And, uh, you know, and now I'm going to, I'm just going to come right in here because we're right at one, just about an hour or and a half into the paintings, right about where I want to stop. So last thing that I probably would do, I, that needs to be a, sometimes they dry down. It could be just a touch lighter, but uh, is revisit this light right against this edge back here. And that's just, boy, you know, when you're working with that, that looks kind of cool. <laughs> you know, when you're working with that, um, that dirty brush and you have and you're working with ultramarine blue which is very weak pigment and uh you're putting this light on if you have just a touch of that burnt sienna in that brush boy it tones that down and grays it down i want to keep this real real light so lots of white and just a tiny bit of the ultramarine blue and that's saying a lot because ultramarine blue is very weak so just almost white here that I want to push right against that edge. It gives me a good atmosphere right here. It gives me good depth. I can break that edge of that little hill right there a bit, right in there, and uh, work that up here just a bit higher, and then let it start the atmosphere off, break this up, fracture a bit. Fracture it through the sky since we have fracturing in our in our hills and stuff like that, fracturing up into the sky. It's a good painterly thing to do. Take a touch of that light that you had there. And don't breathe, but touch it back through there. Now let's go just a touch more blue. And we'll push the final up here into the front. And then, you know, you can go through, add more to, I probably, you know, um, add a little bit more. I probably will add just a little bit more. Um, yeah, that's a better light right up there. To a uh, touch of the light, even though you don't see them too much in the photo, I'd probably add just a touch more yellow, touch of this light right up here, and push a bit more of a highlight right there onto the bushes, just so you get a good feel of light and dark. Don't do it to the other side. Those are in shadow. Or at least that's what we're doing there with this one is putting them in shadow. And um, yeah. And so you get a nice let's uh, center this up so you can get a nice optical feel for, for that particular painting. You can go through and work a few more of your tones. Let's look at that back there though. But that's a pretty good um, optical feel. You know there's one spot I just saw and of course you know I'll probably stop here and then see a few other areas that I might want to change a bit but it's right here it's too much of an angle uh, I do like that word dips down just a bit so I'll just take a bit of my blue and 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 touch over that and then I'll show you how you how you hide that from you doing that so I'll take a touch of my blue it doesn't even have to be exactly the same I'm going to touch into that and then I'll model it a little different, touch into it again here. And let's just grab a bit of that lighter thalo and touch into that here. Touch along that edge. I do like that. It's got to go just a touch lighter. But I want to break this edge down here 
round that down so it's not quite that much of a point right there see that's a little better breaks that kind of rounds that down and then let's just scrub that out into the painting even a little water here and boy just a tiny bit of that burnt sand in my brush that's kind of pretty up here and through there a little water into the, some of this a little bit of that sienna in there is kind of nice um, and that's a little weak right up there at the very top I just saw that so you know here I go starting to find a few areas that should change but I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more blue here and a little more ultramarine more blue right up at the very top up here and uh, yeah let's go more ultramarine fun it's fun it's fun to do this and uh, keep it kind of keep your give yourself a time limit so you keep working so you don't you know it's very easy to start getting a bunch of rocks in here to get lost into the rocks and uh, you know start over painting stuff that you really shouldn't be that you really shouldn't be doing up there you know now how do you soften all of that other kind of stuff out um, just rinse out your brush okay you're an acrylic artist. What's your solvent? Water. What helps move? It's just like you're an oil artist. You thin out to move stuff. We thin out with water and we'll move through just like this and we'll create that nice optical sky here. Don't think you have to blend. You don't. Use your solvent. Use your solvent. Work that right up into that edge there. Kind of like that little light edge there. And uh, work that right up into it break up this edge a bit make it a little more atmospheric there work that right down into there that's nice get that nice modeling sky going all through that that looks pretty nice just like that and then look at it optically there see if you like it I could streak that light up you know if you leave any kinds of uh, any kind any kinds of any kind of uh, lighter streak through something like this you give a little bit more linear perspective which is a good thing those of you studying perspective yeah perspective is so important get that nice linear perspective through there like that and that uh, helps you get a lot of stuff that's good that that works look at that yeah that that works optically i mean it's a painting when you paint that rough, it's a painting made, you know, like this is made to step back. When you step back from that, it looks um, pretty good. We'll pull this over so you can see both of them there. Close. We've changed it, changed the line and stuff a little bit, but it came pretty darn close. Not bad for just a little over an hour and a half, okay? Hope you enjoyed it. Next time we're going to be painting, I found, I've got this beautiful lake. Um, it's right in the fall, and it's a nice little grassy field, a nice little beginning of snow on these mountains in the back, and some fall trees. We're going to do that one, okay? So I was kind of like, do, do this one and do that one. Well, let's do this one, and we'll do the, the fall one next time. So I'll see you next week. We'll do the fall one. You know, keep those brushes moving. Y'all of you stay safe out there. Thanks ever so much for joining me. Hope you had a good time. And acrylics, they really do work. Okay, I'll see you later.